I don't know if it has a tendency to be a bit of a buzzword and people try and claim that they're doing biophilic design without really understanding what it is. But I think as long as people are making the efforts to try and do something around it, then that's a good thing, I think. My name is Matt Waring. I am the editor of Arc Magazine, which is a leading publication around the world dedicated to lighting design in architecture. It's something that when we talk about designing spaces for people, there's a lot of talk about human centric lighting, especially in lighting design. Um, and there's been a lot of studies, I'm sure, that talk about the, the it positive impact that nature and plant life can have on human well-being. So it kind of makes sense to me that you'd incorporate that into environments that you're building. So you kind of bring that, yeah, bring that nature inside and help foster kind of well-being and, you know, improve that kind of mindset and mentality for people. It's definitely something that I think a lot of people are talking about now. I think there's a lot of consideration for it. I think especially we cover a lot of like workspace projects when people are refitting offices and whatnot. And I think since COVID, when we're trying to encourage people to get back into the office from working at home, they need to have an environment that's pleasant to be in, that has that positive mindset and that positive ambience to it. Um, and I think biophilic design kind of becomes like an integral part of that um, in helping create these better spaces. So I think people are paying a lot more attention to it and trying to do, trying to incorporate it a lot more into their work. Well, as I say, I think it's something that people maybe not aren't as fully clued up on, I suppose, the science aspects behind it. And I suppose some of the kind of more sort of heavier scientific elements might be a bit overwhelming for people. So I think there's a lot to understand and a lot to digest. So I think if you can find a way to sort of break it down and make it more understandable, a lot easier to kind of get your head around and know the basics and then some of the sort of more technical intricacies um, after that, I think is something that's going to be really helpful for not just for designers, but for people that are occupying these spaces as well. I mean, I'm sure your book is going to be a great resource for, <laughs> for that. I think that'll be something that'll be really helpful. We're seeing a lot of focus on, you know, circularity and sustainability and helping the planet. And I think if you design in a way that helps the planet, that kind of factors into biophilic design as well, perhaps. I mean, you might tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's something that I think is going to become a lot more prevalent um, and you know especially as designers get more of an understanding of the subject it's something that I think they'll, they'll want to start doing in their work. Mm -hmm.